This video looks at writing to and reading from files using the pickle module. So Python already has its own way of writing to a text file. Um, you can then open up the text file and read the data that's on there and then you can also read that data back into your program. But the major drawback is that if you are actually going to store data or write data to a text file in your program that data has to be as a string variable so you have to prepare all your data um, so that it is in a string uh, stored as a string variable for it to be written onto a text file so if you have data that is um, stored as an integer or a real data type or you have data structures like lists you can't write them directly to a text file using Python's native method so to get around that um, we can actually use the pickle module so using this um, will allow you to write variables of lots of different data types um, and data structures like lists directly to a text file then you could um, at a later date read that data back into your program for processing but the major drawback is that any data that is stored on a text file using the pickle module is done so in a non-readable format so the data is a bit like gobbledygook so if as it says here the purpose of writing to a text file is simply to store and retrieve and not read the data on the file yourself then the pickle module is your answer so let's have a look at how we can do that okay so in this program you can see that I have imported the pickle module and I've got three bits of data that I want to write to file so I've got a list I've got a string variable and I've got an integer now to write to a text file using the pickle method all we do is we write with open we then type the name of the text file that we want to create um, and then um, or if we've already got a text file we put the name in um, of the one that is already stored and then we say what mode we want to actually open it in so we're going to open it in write mode so it's with open as file handler so this is a file handler um, think of it as kind of like a variable that's going to store all the information about the text file um, so that Python can actually deal with the data that's on it and then what we do is we use um, one of pickles methods which is called dump so we write pickle dot dump and then inside brackets uh, we then use another another bracket and inside that we put all the data that we want to store so a list string variable um, integer variable and they are separated by commas and then we have another comma outside a bracket and then we put the name of our file handler in obviously you don't have to call it file handler you could call it f you could call it whatever you wanted so if we now uh, run that program in fact if I show you the folder as it is at the moment you can see that there's no text file there if I run this program okay all of that code has been executed it's now waiting for an input press enter and that program closes if I now go back to the folder you can see that text file has been created and if I open that up you can see that all the data is in there but it's not really in a, a human readable format so that's how you can write to a text file using the pickle method let's have a look at reading it back now reading that data back so again to read the data back we import our pickle module and similar to before we write with open we get the name of our text file but this time we're opening it up in read mode so we open up the text file into our file handler and then what we do is we write down the names of the variables or data structures that we want the data to be loaded back into and the order of this is very important so I know that on my text file I stored the data the list first of all then the string variable then the integer variable so I'm going to put the names of those uh, variables and data structures in the right order and then I'm going to write equals then pickle dot load and then I put the name of the file handler which has again all the information about the text file that's just been loaded up so it's going to load all of that data from the text file 
back into those data structures and variables. And then all I've got here is print a list, string var and int var. So that will print all of the data that has been loaded back into the program. If I now run that, you can see that that's worked perfectly. It's opened up the text file in read mode. It has then loaded from the file handler, which is where the text file has been stored temporarily within the program. It's loaded all of the data back into a list, string var and int var, and then I've printed those back to the screen. And you don't obviously have to have um, these names. You could have um, any name for the list, any name for the variables. Um, it doesn't have to be the same names that were um, used when they were being written to the text file in the first place. And the only issue with this is that if sometimes in a program you might want to load up the data from a um, from a text file first of all. So imagine you had a computer game and you wanted to load the high score before someone um, played their game. You might want to load all that data in first of all. Now the problem is that if the first person to have ever um, played the program or played the game um, comes along, tries to, to run the program, it won't find the text file. Or if it does find the text file, then it won't be able to find any data that's in it. So what we could do um, is a little bit of validation. We could actually uh, maybe handle any errors that, that may come up if the text file is not there or if the text file is empty. And one way is to write a few try and accept um, statements. So here we've got import pickle again. Now we're first of all going to try and open the text file in read mode. If that is successful, we're going to try and load the data from the text file back into our variables and data structures. And we're going to then print out that data if it works. If there is no data to actually load from the text file, in other words, if the text file is empty, then instead of throwing up an error and closing the program, we're going to handle that error and print this file has no data. And likewise, if we're trying to open a text file that isn't there, if there's no text file, instead of an error being thrown up, it's going to handle that error and print there is no file. So if I run this program, we know the text file is there from before. You can see that the data has been loaded absolutely fine. If, however, I delete this text file, and now try and run this program. You can see that it has handled that and says there is no file. And finally, if I create a text file of the same name and try and run my program now, it says this file has no data. And that's a little introduction to using the pickle module.